Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here with Adolfo Perez, who is Senior Vice President of Global Sales and Trade Marketing for Carnival Cruise Line. And I know you're all familiar with Adolfo since uh, maybe not lately because we're never around anywhere at these conferences, but he's he and I are both at these conferences all the time. Uh, but we are here to talk about uh, first some big news. And then we're going to talk about what's going on with Carnival right now. Uh, they've been putting out a lot of uh, messages about their fleet deployment, and obviously they've gotten rid of some of their older vessels, and they got a big new one coming up. Uh, we hope. <laughs> I think I know it's, it's going to happen uh, late, later this year. But we're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Adolfo, first of all, how are you and where are you? And I love the view from your house there. It's, 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 it's really appealing. Or, or either that or you're, you're just living on the private island, right? <laughs> well, um, actually, I'm at home in Miami Beach. Uh, but uh, this is a, a shot from um, Half Moon Key, which is uh, one of our private islands that we share with Holland America Line. Um, and I'd have to say it's probably one of my favorite uh, destinations that we visit. Um, and as you all know, you know, during this time, once we do start uh, cruising again, I think that uh, private islands are going to be, uh, you know, even more important to our guests. Uh, and um, it, it really is a spectacular place. It's probably one of our highest, if not highest rated ports um, that we visit. Um, it's idyllic. It's, uh, we're actually doing a whole campaign now about it. It's called, you know, smile. And part of the reason is if you can see the, I don't know if you can see that, the, the way the bay is there, right. it almost looks like a smile. So uh, we're taking advantage of that and really highlighting, uh, what a great uh, destination it is because it's, it, it is pretty spectacular. And that's my kind of vacation, like hanging out by the beach. And, you know, we have cabanas there that you can rent and there's water sports and there's snorkeling and, you know, stingrays and food and drink, everything you can think of, but it's a, it's a really beautiful place. Um, and I know that we recently announced, uh, I forgot when it was, uh, obviously everything's taking a little longer these days, but, uh, it is a tender port right now. And right. our goal is to have a pier there. Uh, where we can bring ships up alongside so the experience is even better so no and then you're absolutely right private islands are uh, are all the rage and and uh you you were a you, you, uh, carnival in holland america i think holland america that was the first one if i recall or close to it uh yeah. half moon key so let's let's talk about some big news here uh that you're just announced uh that you're gonna uh, maintain uh, your travel advisor commission rates at the current tiers through 2022 uh yeah. and why, why did you decide to do this now? So back in 2020, uh, I guess uh, early on when we started realizing that, uh, sorry, my computer's doing some crazy stuff here. Um, <clears throat> in 2020, early 2020, you know, realizing that we weren't sure what was going to happen, uh, the way travel agents earn commission uh, tiers, you know, they go, they start at 10 and they go up to 16%. Right. And the way that we base the, the commission for the, you know, for the agents is based on sale return bookings. Sure. Um, and um, we have tiers set up uh, starting as low as uh, uh, 40 cabins to go to the next level and so on and so forth. And back in 2020, early 2020, we made the decision that we weren't sure what was going to happen in 2020. Uh, so we, we decided we were going to protect the 2019 commission levels for 2020, regardless of what their production was in 2020. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously everything's been so fluid. We didn't know what was going to happen. Um, again, uh, obviously it's turned out to be much longer than we thought. And 2021, although we're hopeful to restart at some point this year, um, uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty. And we just thought that as a way to, you know, really uh, show our commitment our, uh, uh, and recognize their loyalty to Carnival and their hard work that they've done, because they have been working a lot, mm -hmm. um, uh, harder than ever, um, that we, we just said, forget about 2020 uh, or 2021. Uh, whatever you produce in 2021 doesn't matter because we're going to continue to pay you what we were paying you in 2019 Got it. through 2022, which hopefully gives them some peace of mind. Um, there's, you know, if we hadn't done that, chances are people would go down in commission levels um, based on sale return. Uh, so uh, we thought it was the right thing to do and we're excited that we're doing it.
No, that's great. I'm sure the travel advisors appreciate it. And uh, I know a lot of them sell you a lot. And Carnival has always been a popular. I know anytime we put something on Carnival, it gets a lot of hits. Uh, yeah. the, the people. Now, there's been a lot going on. I mean, almost every week we hear uh, just this past week, uh, you effectively announced that you would be delaying cruising from North American ports until May, at least at this point. Who knows yeah. if that's going to get keep pushing back. And then earlier this week, you announced that certain ships would be put into dry dock or would not really cruise out of certain ports even later in the year. Can you yeah. just detail some of these changes right now just to get us updated on where they are? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we've made some, uh, obviously we had already announced that we were going to do some dry docks that were not originally planned to take advantage of the fact that we weren't cruising. Um, so since the ships were out of service anyhow, why not do the work now? Um, so we've, uh, we, we had already announced some of that. Um, some of the stuff that I think we recently announced was really about um, uh, for example, the uh, the Radiance, which is the Victory, I think it was, the Victory, uh, that's been sitting in Spain now for quite some time. Sure. Uh, she was going to be completely retransformed into the Radiance, uh, Carnival Radiance, and uh, uh, she's been delayed now uh, because of all what's going on in Spain as well. Spain, as you know, has been a hot spot a couple times now, and uh, there's definitely been delays in, um, in getting that work done. So now we've extended that until uh, November. Um, we've uh, also made some changes with, um, uh, uh, with the uh, Miracle sailing out of uh, uh, San Diego. Sure. And so those sailings, now those are going to be taking over the Radiance's uh, three and four day cruises from May until November, I guess it is, when the ship arrives, hopefully, in, uh, in Long Beach. Um, and uh, we, do, we do plan on having three ships sailing out of Long Beach uh, by the end of this year, uh, which is exciting because, you know, California has always been a big market for Carnival, a uh, very important market. We've, you know, always been uh, for many years now, the only cruise line that has year round departures out of LA um, or Lo at Long Beach, I should say. Um, we had uh, the Splendor uh, Imagination and the uh, Carnival Inspiration uh, doing seven day and then three and four day cruises. Um, and, you know, our plan was to do some San Diego stuff, but now it looks like we're even going to be doing some uh, four and five day cruises to Mexico out of Long Beach, uh, which is exciting because I remember many years ago, uh, and I've been in this business a long time, uh, we had done some cruises, I think it was out of San Diego at the time, to the uh, Mexican Riviera on short cruises. And uh, we just couldn't quite make it work back then, but we believe that the market's going to be ready for uh, four and five day uh, out of uh, Long Beach. Um, on the Miracle, and that's a great ship. It's perfect size. It's beautiful, and uh, you know, we're really excited about doing that. Now, what? Well, given all these changes, and you know, everybody's move, ships are moving around, and things are getting booked. What's your best advice to travel advisors trying to book uh, their clients on Carnival this year? I mean, should they just sort of rely on the future cruise credits in case there is an extension of, of delay or ships change, and you're going to kind of take care of them one way or the other? Uh, well, how, how should yeah. they strategize this? So, I mean, I, I've, I've been saying, and, you know, even though there weren't any real conferences in person this year, uh, this past year, uh, we did attend quite a few virtual conferences that I thought were actually really well done um, and had the opportunity to talk about, uh, you know, a bunch of different things. Uh, also on my, uh, I do the From Adolfo's Desk Live now, right. try to do it bi-monthly now. Um, and, you know, one of my biggest messages has been, the lowest hanging fruit you have now are your FCCs. And yes, it's frustrating. And I've said this before, it can be frustrating to rebook them, then to get repaused. There's a lot of fatigue, not only from the consumers, but from, you know, travel partners as well, because it's a lot of work to keep, you know, up with, you know, when can they actually sail? And, you know, one of the messages that I've been saying, besides focus on your FCCs, don't let somebody else book your client's FCC for them, whether it's direct or through another travel agency, because there are some agents out there that are looking for people who have FCCs that want to, you know, take whoever's FCC they are. So if you're not working them, if you're not staying in touch with your FCC clients, those are the people that have raised their hand and say, I want to go on a cruise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
you just have to kind of, uh, you know, really focus on those. And my, my point is, it's frustrating. It's tiring. There's days where you're down. There's days where I'm down. I mean, for God's sake, you know, this has been going on longer than we ever could have imagined. Um, and uh, the those of us that continue to persevere, work hard, pull ourselves out from under that down, you know, those down moments um, are going to be really well positioned because when cruising does restart and it will restart, um, there's going to be a lot of work out there to do demand, new business, new stuff, people excited about going on cruises again. Um, and, uh, those of us who, who really, you know, kind of just, tough it out right now, kind of, you know, like I said, you know, just kind of suck it up right now as hard work that we're all putting in, we're going to be the ones who are well positioned to be more successful than we've ever been once this restart happens and it will, re it will happen. Absolutely. Well, that's great advice. And it, it is true. You got to keep on it and you use those FCCs You make sure you, your clients are, are getting back and booking and yeah, okay. It might get canceled again, but they can just keep moving on. Uh, most people, they're dying to get out. Uh, so at some point, and I, although dying is probably the wrong word to you. I, know, I, I, I almost say that and I'm almost told don't say people are dying. Don't say to dying to get out. Well, it's a problem, but it's a, it's, it's, a, it's just a, it's a euph 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 euphemism, right? It's a, it's yeah. just well, I, I think we should say it's, it's there's the pent up, pent up demand, pent up yeah. demand. That's the other one. Now, uh, you're extending the commission rates, uh, uh, you know, this whole program through 22, but uh, has there been any consideration of changing commission structures overall and kind of providing some travel advisors with compensation, at least in part up front? I know there's been uh, some big cruise sellers that have proposed this, and I don't know how, and, and there have actually been some tour operators that I know, and I don't know about cruise lines, who have looked into this about, you know, when you book, you get some kind of percentage of the yeah. commission. Has, has Carnival looked at that or, or even considering it? Uh, or maybe you can't say, I don't know. Well, no, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, what the reality is. The reality is we pay commission at full payment. So if uh, the cruise is six days or longer, you get your commission 90 days prior to the cruise. If, you're, if it's a shorter cruise, it's 75 days prior to the cruise. We've always done that. Once the bookings paid in full, if they pay with a credit card, the check's cut within a week or two and the agent gets their commission. Um, there has been a lot of talk, obviously, about, you know, trying to front some of that. Mm -hmm. And look... We, we want to do everything we can. We need a healthy distribution system, and uh, it would be wonderful if that was something that could be done. Um, but, you know, as you can imagine, all the cruise lines are in a cash preservation mode right now, right? Um, and uh, as much as, uh, you know, we want to be able to help keep this distribution system, uh, you know, very healthy, I think the things that we are doing are accomplishing that. You know, unfortunately, at this point, we're not, we don't have any plans on, you know, paying commission any earlier than what we're doing. Um, as I said, I think we pay it pretty, pretty far out. Um, uh, and, uh, and I understand the need for it and the want for it. But unfortunately, uh, I don't think it's something that, uh, at least that we're prepared to do. I don't know what others are planning, but. Yeah, it, it hasn't really happened with cruise lines. I know there's been a demand for it. Uh, a couple of tour operators have been doing something. Yeah, uh, but that was, you know, that uh, so and, and I, I actually have done interviews with top agencies that where they suggest it. And, and I said, is any are there any takers on this? And, you know, so far, it's been very limited. And, and yes, we do yeah. understand the need and, and travel advisors have been living pretty much without any commission for about a year. Uh, so it's clearly, you know, they, they want to they want to get some money to survive. But yeah. you're, right, you're right, it's tough because everybody's in the same boat. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. to speak. <laughs> now, uh, now uh, you, you have been doing a lot to support travel advisors, and talk about some of the other things. I mean, you mentioned your own uh, efforts and and your 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 uh, your kind of webinar thing that you do, uh, but talk about some of the other uh, help you're providing to travel advisors. So, I mean, we've we've continued to invest in our GoCCL booking engine. Um, uh, we started, I guess it was about three years ago when we first redid completely our uh, travel agent portal or travel advisor portal, depending on which word you like to use. Um, and uh, that was done, uh, completely redone. It, be, it was became mobile friendly. Uh, you know, it was brought out of the 90s into the 21st century. Um, about two years ago, we... 
uh, we uh, invested in the um, in the booking engine part. So booking an FIT booking or a group cabin uh, has all been also completely updated. And then um, we've added other features uh, like uh, we've improved our travel agent finder on carnival.com. Um, and we just recently launched the new version, uh, the updated version of the um, managed booking. Uh, so we've continued to invest in the tools that we think our travel partners need in order to be successful, efficient, and to be able to, you know, uh, really seamlessly, uh, either on their tablet, on their phone, or on their laptop, be able to transact uh, on Carnival, uh, Carnival's uh, GoCCL navigator. Um, we've also done things like we put out a fundamentals of um, fun in capitals, uh, sure. fundamentals of, uh, of course, everything's about fun, uh, fundamentals of, uh, of selling. Uh, we've had quite a few uh, agents go through that. It was an eight-part series with a ninth kind of finale uh, uh, thing to it, um, you know, helping people you know, FCC, how to, you know, follow up with your FCCs, uh, doing virtual cruise parties, um, you know, making a brand for yourself, uh, staying out with social media in front of your clients, because I think right now more than ever, it's important that your clients are continuously reminded about what it's like to travel, you know, keeping that excitement and those memories in front of them, I think is important to keep them excited about wanting to finally, you know, cruise when we can. So we've done a lot of that. We put together an FCC toolkit that gives uh, agents the ability to track their FCCs, to provide uh, uh, templates for emails uh, so that they can uh, easily, you know, stay in touch with these guests that I keep saying is the lowest hanging fruit. Um, We've uh, done a bunch of virtual ship tours with our BDMs. Sure. Uh, we're going to be launching some uh, uh, new things. I mean, last year we had planned on doing 100 what a parties. Why use the travel advisor parties? Uh, they were so successful in 2019. We were going to do 100 of them last year. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, the times changed and we weren't able to do that. But um, well, you can do them virtually, I suppose, right? Well... <laughs> Stay tuned. We may, be, <laughs> we may be doing that virtually. Um, and uh, again, it's really important. I think we're the only cruise line and probably only travel supplier that has put together a consumer facing um, uh, program or campaign to push the value of travel agents. Um, and I'm telling you, they were so successful. People loved them. They were great. We did them all in person last time. We were going to do them in person in movie theaters across uh, North America last year. What's a movie theater? <laughs> they don't exist anymore. <laughs> I know. No, you're absolutely right. And I, I got to tell you, I was always very impressed by, by all those promotions. And uh, you really were one of the few, if only, cruise line that really focused on driving consumers like that uh, yeah. in, in a mass market way. And, and I, you know, I guess one of, the, one of my subsequent questions, which you've just answered, was, you know, how do you change that during a yeah. pandemic? And uh, uh, I guess you, you're going to even figure out more ways to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. No, we, we definitely have it on our list of things to do for this year, um, you know, obviously differently than we've done it in the past. And, uh, we're, you know, we want to try it out, see what it's like virtually, because um, uh, we do think it's important to get that message out that travel agents are the best way to book, not just cruises. Obviously, we want them to book cruises, but just booking travel in general. I mean, it's like having your own personal assistant that handles all the details, gives you recommendations, you know, make sure that all the, you know, uh, I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and helps you with, uh, you know, recommendations. And, you know, we always say that, uh, putting the right person on the right cruise line, on the right brand, on the right cabin, on the right itinerary is something that's so important. And travel advisors are the ones that can do that the best. Um, and the other thing that I think travel advisors do that, um, you know, we can't as a cruise line or even as a cruise industry is we can't talk to as many people as they can. Um, I think that that's one of the reasons that home-based agents, you know, have been so successful sure. because they have access to local communities local groups, um, and they can reach people that even the best, you know, TV commercials or uh, digital campaigns that the cruise lines do or mailers um, can never do uh, when you have somebody that's trusted that, you know, in your community that, that can help you make a decision and put you on the right product. So, 
No, absolutely. And that's why, you know, the growth of the home-based market. And, uh, you know, I saw that as you did. Uh, we also that crazily grow from the late 90s until today where, you know, at least more than half of all travel advisors are working remotely. And now they really are working remotely. Uh, yeah. by, by, you know, so this isn't really a change of pace for them. It's just a lack of business. Yeah. Now. I can remember a time when uh, many years ago, I mean, I, I've been at Carnival. I just celebrated my 39th year. I started when I was in high school. Um, and I remember a time when uh, I think it was, was it NACOA, National Cruise Only Agents, uh, whatever, Association. Um, and everybody thought, uh, you know, cruise only agents were nuts. Like, oh, of course. Yeah. Like, and I, I, I date from that too. In the early nineties, you know, the, the yeah. travel agent was a full service travel agency and those people selling cruises were not really travel agents. Yeah. Right? And uh, it, all, it's the home agents, you know, and host agents and, uh, you know, they've, they've gotten a little bit beat up sometimes, but look, they have proven to be a really reliable distribution system that has weathered this storm, um, really, really well because of the way that they're set up. So no, it's absolutely they are definitely set up that way. And uh, just an idea, you know, you you were doing them in movie theaters these promotions. I mean, maybe you should look into Netflix. I mean, everybody is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, is everybody? I mean, I can't. If, if someone uh, tells me one more Netflix movie you recommend, I'm going to die because it's, it's like there's so much people are just watching it like crazy. And, I, and but uh, boy, I wish I could go to a movie theater, uh -huh. uh, whether it's to see a promotion by Carnival or anything else. So we're going to see yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, now, is there any, you, you have the new ship coming up, uh, uh, Mardi Gras, which hopefully I'm going to get, we'll all get a chance Super to be. Super excited. Uh, now, do you have any special promotional programs planned for that trade coupled with the launch uh, of Mardi Gras? Well, we did. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, typically we would do some kind of, obviously, a naming event and inaugural, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe an overnight or, a, you know, a cruise. Uh, this obviously this uh, pandemic has made the the the, uh, the opportunity to do that a little bit more difficult. Um, I am excited about when the ship actually gets to the U.S. Uh, we are you know she's uh, she, I think she's still in Barcelona. Right. Um, she left the shipyard uh, I guess a month ago or so, and um, we're just waiting for her to get to the U.S. And hopefully when she does arrive in the U.S., we'll be able to make a big deal about that. Probably not on board, unfortunately, but um, uh, until we can, you know, start cruising again. But uh, I, I think it'll be, it'll still be an exciting moment to see uh, that ship come in. It's, you know, the first of its class for us, uh, most innovative, largest uh, roller coaster on board. Uh, um, great. Uh, just, you know, I, I've said before that I think our ships have evolved. You're, you know, from the from the tropical that we built to the fantasy, the holiday class, then the fantasy class, and spirit, and all these. And you kind of know where you are on any one of our ships, right? They're kind of laid out similar. They're bigger, longer, wider. Got well, well, a lot more bells and whistles. But I believe this one is truly a revolution in the design that we've done for cruise ships um, for us. And. Um, I'm really excited about uh, getting the opportunity to, uh, to board that ship and, and check her out because it sounds really exciting, all the stuff that we've been releasing. Yeah, absolutely. And I was covering that, uh, you know, the last year, all this, uh, and it definitely was a bit, uh, certainly was nothing like her namesake, which was no. the original Carnival. I held on the morning of myself, the original, yeah. That was the original, and it's, it's carnival ships have definitely evolved, and indeed your whole fleet has evolved. I mean, you know, you've had to you you've shed some of the older ships, and yeah. uh, you're getting a whole new uh, range of new ships coming in. It's the new carnival essentially. Yeah. And, uh, unfortunately, it's coming in at, at, during this period, and hopefully, will emerge from this soon uh, when you know people have to start realizing it will be a whole new carnival. Yeah, I mean, one thing that's interesting to note is obviously we got rid of, um, I should say we retired four ships, shouldn't say we got rid of them, even though we sort of did. Um, <laughs> the, um, uh, by 2022, when the Carnival Celebration joins the fleet, which is the second, yeah. excuse me, in the second XL class uh, ships, um, we're going to have more capacity than we did in 2019, so... That's, that's the thing, thing is that everybody looked at all the ships that you were uh, were leaving the fleet, uh, and and uh, they didn't realize that you're going to have you know these are much, these are larger ships. They're more innovative. They're they're you know and and it was probably time anyway to to yeah. refreshing the fleet, if you will. 
Yeah, yeah. No, we'll definitely have a much younger, more efficient fleet. And uh, obviously the, the whole LNG thing on these ships is going to be great. Uh, cleaner burning fuel and uh, our commitment to the, to the environment and making sure that, uh, you know, we, we are uh, good stewards of the oceans and the places that we visit. So, and so then we can go and, and, and uh, take a sail out to the island behind you. That's what we're looking for. Now, is there anything else uh, you want to tell our 75,000 travel advisors out there about Carnival today, the extension of the commission uh, rates into 2022 uh, and, or any other programs that you have planned? Um, I don't have anything else really to share today other than a big thank you for uh, everything that they've done to help support us during this time. And uh, like I said, I'm with them on the frustration and the fatigue and uh, I applaud them on their perseverance and uh, how hard they've all been working. And uh, like I said, the, those of us who continue to work hard and pull ourselves up from when the times that we're down uh, are going to be well better positioned to succeed when this restart does happen. Now, uh, where can travel advisors go to find out about more about Carnival's commission program and other marketing plans? Well, the best place to go, obviously, is gocl.com. Um, that's where you can get all the information you have. You know, we have a rewards program there that we've, uh, you know, had there for quite some time. Uh, Learn and Earn, where you have a education. Uh, we have all the information about the ships. Plus, you know, it's probably one of the best booking engines uh, out there. And, you've been uh, improving it, as you said earlier. It's, 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 yeah, it's, you've been doing a lot of work on it. Well, mm -hmm. Adolfo, I want to thank you for taking the time. It's great to see you. I mean, we see each other at uh, these events that we seem to have been, we really do miss now after all that. You know, we used to go, oh, we got another agent conference. Uh, I used to complain next. about travel. Now I miss it. <laughs> I know. That's it. We're, we're all in the same boat there. But hopefully we'll be back soon, By certainly by mid-year, the end of the year. And hopefully we'll be uh, on on your new ship uh, together later, later, uh, later this year. So I'm looking forward to that. I really am. Look I was really looking forward to Mardi Gras and, and now the anticipation has just been building even more uh, yeah. given, given this pause in operations. But again, th thank you for taking the time to, to chat with us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm James Schillinglaw and this is Insider Travel Report.